Hey, this is René. Thanks for joining me for the third part of our programming tutorial where we build a fully working RSI expert advisor. And in the first two parts, we created a new expert advisor and we talked about variables. Um, and we learned how to declare and initialize variables. Now we want to work with variables and then we will talk about functions in this part. So first of all, let me delete most of these variables or let me delete the boolean at least. We don't really need that. Uh, I, I, I want to show, show you how you can um, work with variables. And yeah, maybe I will show you a simple example. We can have a um, variable of integer data type that is called counter, which has the value three uh, stored in it. And we will have a double name variable um, of type double, which name is double name, and which has this uh, exact value stored inside of it. And what you can do with um, variables is you can um, um, calculate with their values. So for example, I can make a new double variable, new double variable, and I can um, initialize it with the value of counter plus double name. And what this does it is it simply um, double variable. It simply adds the two values. Yeah, let me let me choose an easier value, like two dot four four. And it will add the two values together, and it will store the result in this new double variable. I can show you the output of it um, in the MetaTrader 5, and it is 5.44, which is the sum of these two variables. So what the computer does here in this line is it, um, first of all, it declares a new double variable with the name new double variable, and then it initializes it with the value of counter plus double name. And what it does here it is, is it, it, it gets to this point pretty much where it, uh, where it sees, um, so the computer realizes that there is a variable used for this calculation. And um, it sees the name of this variable, which is pretty much only a pointer. I, I explained it in the last tutorial and it points to a um, specific address in your random access memory. So in, your, in the memory of your computer. And um, yeah, because it points to the exact position, the computer is able to retrieve the data that is stored at this position. And it kind of uh, replaces the name with the exact value. And it does the same for the double name named variable of type double. So it goes to the exact position in the memory and it sees the value that is uh, stored in there and it pretty much replaces this. So after the computer processes this, um, it will do this operation because it has all the information through um, or because it's able to retrieve the data from the variables. So that's what you can do with very very variables. It's hard to pronounce. And what you can also do is um, uh, yeah, doing any other operation pretty much. So you could, um, um, instead of adding them, you could subtract them and you will have another result, of course, or you could divide um, one value and yeah, divide it with the other one and you can multiply. Um, so any mathematical operation is available um, for these uh, type of operations and working with variables. And um, that's all I want to tell you. Um, you have to, uh, you have to um, take care of the data types of the result variable because um, if I choose it to be an integer variable, this will not work because um, the result of this operation is a double type um, result and you are not able, you are not allowed to store a double type variable or value inside an integer um, variable because um, what we learned before is that an integer variable has only um, four bytes of uh, memory and the double variable takes eight bytes. So the double result from this operation is simply too big to fit into the memory that is um, stored 
are reserved for this integer variable. So if I compile this, you can see that the um, result is simply 7 and not 7.32, which would be correct. So it cuts every um, number that is behind the digit point. So um, yeah, you, you, you should take care of this and you should on, on, always pick the right data type for, your, for the type of information or for the information you want to store in it. Um, and last thing I will tell you about uh, variables is a um, new string is that um, whenever you work with strings you can um, uh, you can add two strings together pretty much um, which is longer than before by um, using this plus sign and whenever you add two strings together you will see that the result is simply um, yeah the the first um, string plus the um, the other string you added to it. So you can see it here. Yeah, just play around with this uh, concept and try to do different uh, operations with variables, and you will get used to it. And we will use variables in this tutorial at a later point. Uh, what I want to show you now in this tutorial is how you can work with um, variables. Uh, no, not variables. Um, uh, functions, of course. And um, we already learned about three important functions. The onInit, the onDinit, and the onTick function. And a function is um, a concept of which you will find in every programming language pretty much. And you can call functions in your program um, yeah, at any point pretty much. So um, these functions are uh, system functions. So the functions are called automatically by the MetaTrader 5, but you can declare your own functions, which we will do in one or two minutes. First of all, I want to explain you how a function um, looks. So you can see here, it has a data type pretty much, which is not a simple data type, but a return type. So whenever the onInit function is called, it returns a value to the, um, to the part of code that called it. So um, this function is called by the MetaTrader itself and it returns a information about the uh, status uh, of the initialization. So it could be either a success or it could be uh, maybe a failure. And then it would um, return init failed. And then um, if I do this, the um, expert advisor will not be initialized because it will automatically be initialized again because this um, onInit function returns init failed and the part of code that called this onInit function, which is part of um, the MetaTrader 5 code, that is huge and we don't have to look at it, but um, this code or the, the MetaTrader 5 program itself will retrieve the information that this initialization failed and it automatically deactivates the expert advisor. So, um, yeah, and this is um, pretty much of type integer. So this is, um, and it succeeded is, yeah, simply a zero, but it is um, called, but you can call it init succeeded, um, which is an enumeration or part of an enumeration um, or it, it is defined at the, as, um, as this value and we don't have to look at this closer. Um, all you have to know is that the return type of an, a function will be the value returned by this function, of course. So um, whenever the, the function is called, you will, um, um, or I think it's easier by, uh, it's easier explaining how functions work by um, writing your own function. Um, we'll write a funct uh, function with return type void, and void is uh, pretty much a uh, it's an empty um, it's an empty type. So there's no value stored in a void uh, data type. And um, if you use a function and you say that the return type is of type void, you simply say that this function does not return anything. So this, oh, um, yeah, this could be or function, and um, whenever you declare a function, you have parentheses where you can um, put data in to process inside of this function. 
Uh, we will leave them empty for now and I will explain this later. And then you write an open bracket, it's in curly bracket, and a closing curly bracket. Um, yeah, it is. It doesn't really matter if you write them like this directly after these parentheses or if you write them like, like it's done here, or like in the next line. Um, I prefer this type of writing, but you can also choose to write like this. I don't care. And it doesn't really affect the program at all. So feel free to choose either one or the other option. Um, so inside of our function, we could print something like this is our function. Function. And we saw this before, whenever we print something, it is printed inside the experts log. And what we see here is that nothing is printed. So um, that is because we defined this function, but we didn't call it in, in our program. So whenever we call this function, we can just write the name of the function, our function like this, and um, you have to write the parentheses, that, what, that is what tells the computer that this is a function, and then the uh, semicolon to say that this line or this, um, this statement is over. And if I compile this, now we will see that this is our function is printed whenever the on init function is uh, processed. Because whenever we initialize this expert advisor, when we change the time frame or anything, the on init function will be called and when the on in function is called the body which is between these two uh, curly brackets is executed and inside of this body there is a call to our function which is called our function and whenever this function is called the computer searches for this exact function in the program code and it will find it outside of any other function of course because it's in another function and it will find it here and it will execute the body of this function and inside of the body of this function there it says this is a function and um, yeah that's pretty much it it could also return a value like an integer value return one maybe and if we do this we can um, this is our result we can declare a variable of type integer and we can initialize it with the return value of our function and do it like this because if the computer reaches this line it declares a um, integer variable and it goes on pretty much like this it just processes the code from the top to the bottom and it will see that there is a call to our function and at this point our function will be processed and after words or in this function there will be um, the return value one that is returned by this function and this will be stored inside inside the result variable and if I print this you will see that this is in, um, indeed working. So this is our function and the result is one which is printed which is also printed and I told you that you you also have this um, parentheses where you can store like values in and um, or where you can declare variables for this function. So we could declare um, uh, declare a parameter, it is a parameter for this function and we could call it, call it text, which is simply a text. Um, and we could change the print statement uh, to this is our function and the text is, and then we can concatenate two um, strings by simply using the plus sign. And then we will see that the output, oh, first of all, we will see that this will um, produce an error because our function now has the wrong parameter count. Um, before we did this, we didn't have any parameter, so this is fine. But now we do have a text uh, or a string parameter, so the compiler um, says that um, we have to provide this parameter. So we have to provide a text like um, uh, the on in it or so. Um, okay, if we do it like this, this will work and it will print um, this is our function and the text is the on in it. And if I call this function again, but now I call it in the on d in it, I could write a different type of text. Maybe I could write this is the yellow elephant that is running really fast. And um, what, whatever I type in here as a parameter 
will be directly or will be used in the function um, with the name of function. So you will see that um, whenever the on D in it is called, like when, when I remove the expert advisor, you will have the output of this is our function and the text is the yellow elephant um, that is running really fast. So that's pretty much how you use functions. And um, maybe you, you ask um, yourself why we even have to use functions. Because I could also write... Um, the text in here without um, blah 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 I could write the text in here without calling the function but um, whenever I have the same block of code several times like I do here I have this in the on in it and in the on d in it then it always makes sense to write a simple um, function for this and call the function instead of calling the code several times because I, 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 I could use I could do different things in here, like double um, Peter plus two uh, or is two and integer Manuel is this and string text two. I, I, I could do pretty much in here. And um, if I do this and this makes sense pretty much, then um, it is absolutely better to write a function because um, I can simply call the function two times without writing all this two times. Because if I wouldn't have this function, I would have to do this pretty much. I would have to um, call the whole code block two times and I would have many more, um, many more lines which would make the code look more uh, confusing and it's not really easy to understand it. And another really important point is whenever I change this, like maybe I want to change the number, I do have to um, have to do the same up here. And if I have all this inside of the function, I only have to do this once and it will get, or it will, it will apply it to any, um, to any function call where this function is called. So that's it. That's all about functions. Or not, not all about functions, but it, it is enough. Um, for you to know about functions to go on with the next part that is control structures and we will do that in the next tutorial i will see you then i hope you will um you will watch it and yeah have a nice time until then bye bye